coming your way. A blessing is coming your way. And your blessing will bless you. Redemption Christian Center of Trinidad and Tobago presents Light in the Word with Bishop Dr. Victor Gill. We just want to open up our hearts for the word of God. So let's put our hands together as we welcome Pastor Victor Gill. Praise be to God. Okay, Ephesians 2, reading verse 12 and 13. Ephesians 2, 12 and 13. But at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. My message today is there is hope. There is hope. Tell the person next to you there is hope. Hope is a very important thing. Hope is more important than you might imagine it to be. What is hope? According to the secular definition, hope is feeling of expectation and desire for a particular thing to happen. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a particular thing to happen. Biblically speaking, hope is a reasonable and confident expectation. A reasonable and confident expectation. It is grounds, hope biblically, is grounds for believing that something good will happen. And the Apostle Paul classified hope as one of the three abiding, among the three abiding things in this life. 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 13 says, And now abideth hope, rather faith, hope, and love. These three. Now abides faith, hope, and love. And what he meant by that is that these three are the pillars of life. They are the pillars of life. These are the essentials we need to live, to keep on keeping on. To continue in life, to go on in life, to be successful in life, to be victorious in life, we must have faith, hope, and love. So the Apostle Paul classified hope as one of the three abiding pillars in this life. So hope is very important among these three entities. 
faith, hope, and love. The most unpopular one, the one you hardly hear anything about, is hope. But that is the one I'm speaking about today. Number three, that hope is an anchor for our souls. Nothing on earth makes life more joyous and worthwhile than knowing you have hope in God. Knowing that you are in right standing with God. When you have that hope, you can walk regardless of what you are going through. With a bounce in your step. Amen. You can walk with a pip on your shoulder. You, 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 in spite of what you are going through. There is a resident confidence. Because you know to be absent from this body is to be present with God. And sometimes when we face the trials of this life, we must remember what we have in God. Sometimes we face the trouble of life, the troubles of life, and we feel discouraged. But the psalmist David says, why are thou cast down, O my soul? Psalms 42 and verse 5. O my soul, why are you cast down? And why are you disquieted? Hope thou in God. For I will yet praise him. For the help of my continence. So that I don't have to walk with my head bowed down in shame. Only God alone knows what some of us go through. In the secrecy of our thoughts. In the privacy of our minds. When some of us say, I can't take it no more. I can't bear it no more. It's too much. It's like when David went to Ziklag and he saw the house burn down. The houses burnt to the ground. Their wives and children captured and taken. And his mind said, end it all. And his men said, we will help you. <laughs> hey. And they took up stones to stone him. But the Bible said David encouraged himself in the Lord. And I believe it's in this context. He said in Psalms 42 and verse 5, Why are thou cast down? See, something you had to talk to yourself. It's himself he was talking to you. Know? In the book of Hebrews chapter 6 verse 18 and 19, it says that by two immutable things, that by two immutable things, in which it is impossible for God to lie. We might have, we might have, we might have strong consolation. Strong consolation. Who have fled for refuge to lay hold on the hope that is set before us. My God, we ought to have as Christians strong consolation. Do you have strong consolation today? When you face the vicissitudes of life. Verse 19. This hope we have as an anchor for our souls. Both sure and steadfast. And enters into the presence. Behind the veil. It means that this hope. Is not only for this life. But it's for future. It works in this life. And it goes beyond this life. The presence behind the veil, if you understand the temple, behind the veil where the presence of God was, was a type of heaven. And it says that this hope that we have goes behind the veil. And so as Christians, when we face the storms of this life, when we face the challenges 
of this life. We are like a ship on the water, tossed to and fro, like a ship in a storm, tossed to and fro. But in the unseen, beyond the scene, we have an anchor. There is a rope with an anchor that holds. Men cannot see it, but there is an anchor. And Paul is saying that that anchor is the hope that we have of heaven. We know that our life is hidden with God in Christ. We know, glory be to God, that to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. And so we don't lose our mind. We don't give up and give in and throw in the towel. We don't behave like the unsaved. We don't don't uh, act as if we are hopeless, as if we don't know who we are and where we are going. Glory be to God. When the challenge comes, when the challenges of life come, when the storms come, our minds can be, can be steadfast. Our minds can remain focused because we have a hope beyond this life glory be to God we have a hope in God we have a hope that is an anchor for our souls we have a hope that holds within the veil we have a hope that is anchored in the presence of God glory be to God so we don't have to be hopeless amen and I believe this is what made Job uh, who he was when he stood this is what caused him to stand under pressure he said though he slay me yet will i trust him whatever god does he does it with a good end in mind he does it with a good purpose in mind so that whatever happens because i know god loves me because i know jesus loves me because i know god has my best interest in mind I could say like Job do he slay me yet will I praise him that is why Paul said in everything give thanks because he didn't say for everything but in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you some of the things we go through Some of the things, many times, some of the hardship we face as Christians on the road, many times it's because God is protecting us from ourselves. God alone knows. God knows what you can handle. And if some, if everything had gone the way some of us wanted it to go, we might not be in church today. We have this hope that God is in charge. God is in control. We have this hope that we can come to all joy when we fall into diverse temptation. We have this hope that he that begun a good work in us will complete it, will perform it until the day of Christ come hell or high water. Glory be to God. Jesus is my savior. I shall not be moved. Jesus is the rock upon which I stand. I shall not be moved. Glory be to God. If God be for me, who can be against me? What shall be against me? God is my rock. God is my shield. God is my shelter. Glory be to God. My shade by day, defense by night, a shelter in the time of storm. Glory be to God. I know, glory be to God, whom I serve. And I know that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know he walks with me. I know he talks with me. I know he is with me. And nothing happens by chance. Glory be to God. I am more than a conqueror. I am a winner. I am an overcomer. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. God is in control. Habakkuk said in Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 
and 18 he says although the fig tree shall not blossom neither shall the fruit be in the vines the labor of the olive shall fail and the field shall yield no meat the flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stores yet i will rejoice in the lord and I will joy in the God of my salvation. Oh my God. See, it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter how it looks. I will be happy. I will rejoice. Because I know. I know that God is good. I know that there is hope. I have an expectation of something better. I have an expectation that God is working something for me. Even if he has to rebuke me. Even if he has to allow me to fail, but not be a failure. That I might rise up again and let my failure become a stepping stone. But I have a hope that he is not through with me I have a hope that he has a plan for my life I have a hope that the best is yet to come I have a hope that tomorrow will be better than yesterday tomorrow will be better than today I have a hope that I'm going somewhere I have a hope of seeing a better day of seeing a brighter day of seeing a brighter future that my suffering is not in vain my faith is not in vain my patience is not in vain my waiting is not in vain my tribulation is not in vain glory be to god hallelujah i am more than a conqueror when god made me he did not make a mistake glory be to god and I am not an accident looking to hop on. Glory be to God. I am a promise. I am a possibility. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am the apple of God's eyes. Hallelujah. Amen. We have this hope in Jesus Christ. In Jesus. A mess becomes a message. In Jesus, death becomes a means of resurrection. In Jesus, no food gives hope to a miracle. Two fishes, five loaves gives hope to 12 baskets remaining. It didn't work out. I didn't get to go to Fatima College, QRC, Queen's Royal College. Yeah, I didn't get to go there. But I heard when he called his apostles, amen, he looked for unlearned and ignorant men. Amen, amen. Could it be that, amen, that God had a plan? Why he took me where he took me from. Amen. When, when, when my mother and my father were going through the mess. Amen. God had a plan. You see Christ. Everything has a purpose. What you need to do is live with hope. Who can tell what God will do for you tomorrow. You see but when you don't have hope. You throw away everything. You say I don't expect nothing. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. So it does not matter. The brother, I was ministering in the prayer meeting and I said, while I was praying, while I was praying, I said, you brother, under the anointing, I said, you, let's go to the Philippines. Come and go to the Philippines with me. He didn't even have a bird paper. He told me when they give him a name from the orphanage, they said, but since we don't know his name and we don't know his birthday, but let's guess a name. Let's just call him Guy. <laughs> Some Guy. <laughs> I don't know which Guy, but let's just give him Guy. And then when we had 
Another meeting, the Lord that wasn't come. The Lord said, somebody has a bird paper issue. But it is well. No, listen to this. No, he has bird paper. Passport. American visa. And his book confirmed. He will be misunderstood. When he will look to leave Egypt, people will say, Moses, you're leaving the throne. Moses, you know what you are doing. Moses, you sure your head on right. Moses, you sure you are making the right decision. Moses walk away from royalty. He walked away from wealth. Glory be to God. To do the will of God amidst reproaches, amidst rejection. Glory be to God. But he looked forward to the hope. Moses Moses knew that God was with him. Glory be to God. Moses knew that he had heard from God. Hallelujah. And as long as he served God faithfully, he had a, an eternal hope, an eternal future. Glory be to God. And in this world, we cannot listen to the crowd. We cannot follow men. We cannot follow the values of this world. We got to know what God is saying to us. We got to know what the will of God is and do the will of God. And as long as we do that, we know that he will never leave us and he will never forsake us. But he will be with us always unto the end of this world. Glory be to God. And though you face a red sea, have hope. Though there is no water to drink, have hope. He is a rock in a weary land. Though you will face Shakanda Rabbi, as you obey God, as you step out, you will face a wilderness where there is no food as you used to eat sometimes, sometimes, sometimes. Oh yes, 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 sometimes. But God is able to send manna from heaven. Oh glory be to God. Manna, glory be to God. Amen. To feed the children of Israel. He is able to bring you to your destination. As long as you believe, don't tell me about your problem. Christ is in you. He said it. He said, I will never leave you, never forsake you. And I give you the Holy Ghost. Have faith. Believe God. Have some power in your life. Have some strength. Have a shout of victory. Say, devil, I believe God. I, 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 I am a believer. I don't care what you do. I know. I know that I know that I know. I know. Shut up, I didn't come to church to depend on somebody to pump me up. 
I am happy because I know. I said I know. Thank you for tuning in to Light in the Word, a production of Redemption Christian Center. We have been receiving calls from across the Caribbean, uh, from Jamaica, Barbados, St. Vincent, St. Lucia, even right here in Trinidad and Tobago. And we thank you for calling. We thank you for tuning in. Today, if you are not a Christian, this is the most important decision that you can ever make, the decision to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, to prepare for eternity. The Bible tells us that there is a heaven and there is a hell. And God loves you. He sent his son Jesus Christ to die for you. And if you want to receive him today as your Lord and Savior, join me in this short prayer. Allow me to pray for you. Say this prayer with me. Say, say Lord Jesus, today I thank you for your word. I thank you for dying for me on the cross. I repent of my sins. And I receive you today into my heart as my Savior and Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Friend, if you said that prayer, I want you to know, based on the word of God, if you said it and you mean it and you believe it, the word of God says, as many as receive it, to them we give power to become the sons of God. The Bible says every man in Christ is a new creature. That means you are born again. And I want to encourage you to find a good Bible, believe in Pentecostal church, and continue to be fed and nurtured. Probably you heard this word and you are a Christian, you are, you are straight from the Lord. I want to encourage you to come back to the Lord and you know, repent, live holy, because he's coming for our children without spot and wrinkles. Whatever you are going through, probably you are sick in your, you're in your home, I want to say I want to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all our listeners, uh, those that are lost, those that are, uh, are backslidden, and those that have made a decision to serve you today. Those that are sick, I pray for them. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you will save, you will heal, you will restore, you will deliver. You are sick, touch your body, and I command healing in the name of Jesus. I want to thank you again for listening. Until we meet again next time on this station, God bless you. Amen. If you have a why to live, you can endure almost any harm.